have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host.
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Tonight, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. We are here yet again, indeed, to bring a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're super excited, amen, this afternoon to be uh, tuned in with you. Hallelujah. Such a glorious song uh, uh, of melodies uh, talking about Christmas. Amen. And we're just so excited, hallelujah, that we are. I'm just, let me tell you why I'm really, really excited. I'm excited because next week my kids don't have to go to school, right? So that means uh, we can get a break. <laughs> Glory to God. So uh, we're excited about that. Amen. We're excited about Jesus. Amen. Because of his birthday. We're super excited about that. He was born. Amen. I don't know the actual date that he was born, but we do know that he's born. And so we celebrate him. Amen. This month for his birth. Right. So we praise him. We should celebrate him every day because he is our risen savior. Amen. Hallelujah. So listen, go ahead and call the friend, call the neighbor and let them know that I'm on the air this afternoon. Let them know this evening, rather. Let them know that I'm here. Amen. And if you can hear me, I need somebody to shoot me a text and let me know that they can hear me well. We appreciate God this afternoon. Amen. For all that he's doing. Hallelujah. All that he said he would do. You know, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that we should have to repent. Whatever God has spoken in your life, over your life, it shall surely come to pass. A lot of times we don't see things manifest and we think it, we uh, sometimes want to blame the prophet. Uh, but sometimes we don't cover the word that has been given to us. So this afternoon, if God is giving you a word, you better hold on to it. You better water the word. You better nurture the word. Amen. When you're holding on to the word and you're nurturing it and watering it, what you're saying is I'm bringing this word back up before God. God, you say it through your man or through your woman of God, yada, yada, yada. Whatever he says spoken, whatever God has spoken in your life, you can take it to the bank. You can call it back to his remembrance. God doesn't forget what he say to us. Sometimes we forget what he says, but he doesn't forget. Hallelujah. He's omnipresent. Hallelujah. He's everywhere. He don't forget. He's all-knowing. He never forgets. So uh, we just bless him tonight. So I'm going to give you a few more seconds to go ahead and let them know that I'm here tonight. Sometimes you say, well, I want to make sure you're here before I let them know. Well, baby, don't worry about it. If I tell you I'm going to be on, most times you'll know if I'm not coming on before I'm not coming on. Amen. So go ahead and let them know that we are here tonight to obey God. Amen. And y'all know this, know this. If you don't hear anything else I say tonight, know that obedience is key in every situation, in every hour. Your obedience to God is key. It is so important that you obey God to the fullest, not halfway, not part way, not a piece of a way, but all the way. Your obedience to God means everything. So don't let anybody fool you and thinking that you can just do a little bit here and there and then it's okay. No, you got to obey fully to the fullest, right? Amen. And we just praise God this afternoon. So let me go ahead and get uh, uh, my accolades out of the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, amen to, to our lovely, wonderful, sweet, and kind-hearted producer, Dr. Kim and Kim, and the Elations family. I'm telling you, she's such a woman of elegance. She's so sweet and caring. I appreciate God for the love that she shows towards everyone that comes uh, uh, on the radio broadcast. I just thank God for her loving kindness that she shows towards God's people. And for that woman of God, God has a blessing with your name on it because he has not forgotten what you have done for people like myself and others whom you are helping uh, 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 advance the kingdom, right? She is helping us advance the kingdom. Amen. So it's important that y'all invite people to come on, amen, to hear. And it's important that when I, uh, when she posts uh, 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 the replay up on my page every couple of days after the, after Tuesday, it is important that you share it, get people to go back and listen to it, the replay. So all of this is important. So that's why I ask you to make sure you get 10 of your friends. If everybody on here get 10 of their friends, listen, by the end of the week, we'll have over 200 listeners. So y'all just make sure you do that, right? Amen. So I'm super excited tonight. Amen. I just want to shout out some of my, uh, for the Body of Believers International Prayer Line. Amen. Holly, I see y'all. 
I want to shout out our ministry. I want to first give reverence to to honor to my husband, Amen, Bishop James Hunter. I give honor to him tonight, Amen. My love of my best friend, my father, the father of all of our children, got five, Amen. Glory to God. I just give, I just want to shout him out, Amen, because uh, he's just a great husband. He's a great man, right? He's a great man to know. He don't mind helping anybody. Amen. And I just love him. I love him. I love him. And then listen, how many ways, you know, that song, I just thought about this thing. You know how they say, how many ways do you love him? Baby, I, it's count. I mean, listen, I can't even count how many ways that, that I love him. I can find a reason. Anytime I just look at him, I get a good reason to love him. Come on here, somebody. Anybody mad know what I'm talking about? You can just look at your spouse. Come on here. Whether you're male or female, you can just look at him. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And I'll be like, Lord, I so thank you for this fine honker for me. <laughs> Glory to God. But listen, we ain't come here to talk about what our, <laughs> our, our, our spouses, but we do have to recognize them. And you got to give them their props. If they're helping you, blessing you, helping you with the family, making sure the family has everything that they need because that is the husband's job to protect, to provide. Hallelujah. A- amen. He's got to provide for the family. Hallelujah. How can he tell me he want to marry me and he couldn't put me in the house? Come on. It ain't right. Right? It ain't for me to set us up in no house. That ain't my job. It's for him to do that. So, amen. He's my protector. He's my provider. He's my priest. He's my prophet. He's a friend. When I need a friend, he's a shoulder to cry on. So he, he's done a, a numerous of things. He's got numerous of titles. And I just thank God for him. And I thank God for him. For him, and also I thank God for our ministry, for Ever Flowing Ministries, amen. I thank God. In Mobile, Alabama, come on, Mobile, we're here tonight. Hallelujah. Southern girl, Southern belle, we're here tonight, amen, to deliver what the Lord wants us to deliver tonight. Glory to God. So listen, I hope that you got them on here. I, again, I wanted to shout out a couple of people that just sent me a text and said, I hear you. I want to shout you out, Ashley Crawford. Uh, 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 yeah, Jamaica Hunter, Kendra Brown. Thank y'all for letting me know that y'all can hear me well. I'm going to shout y'all out when y'all let me know stuff when I ask. So I appreciate God for you guys. Minister Kendra, Minister Jamaica, and Minister Ashley, God bless you all. Amen. So listen, let us go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you tonight for these, your people, that you have allowed to assemble, uh, uh, God, under the sound of my voice. Father, let me speak a word of encouragement to them, oh God, that they can apply to their lives. Father, help me. Hey, amen. To see in the realm of the spirit. Sharpen my discernment tonight. Oh, God, you be my eyes. You be my mouth. Lord, let me speak what you want me to say. Lord God, so I thank you tonight that I'm yielding my spirit. Oh, God, over to you. God, whatever way you want to use me, use me so that I can be fit for your use. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, this time of fellowship. We thank you for uh, how you uh, uh, connected uh, Dr. Kim and Kim and myself. Father, I thank you for the friendship, the sistership. God, I bless you for that, oh, God. So tonight, Lord God, let us let us just speak to the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. So listen, you guys, I do understand that this is a time of year. Uh, uh, you know, you guys are out shopping. Some of you are putting a lot of a lot of attention to and a great detail into buying your gifts, right? And so, you know, I'm like, Lord, I, I'm just seeing a lot of things that I've not seen before. When I say not seen before, because I've never on that aspect. I've been not been on that aspect for over. Mm, uh, a whole lot of years, 20 plus years. Uh, now, at 20 plus years, uh, we've been on the aspect of giving back. All right? We give back. This is the time we want to give back. Um, and so um, I was just thinking about this today, how people, they uh, make they try to make sure that the gifts that they give would be appreciative and the gifts that they give would be something that someone wanted, Right? So am I thinking about this? You know, I said, but Lord, what if they put their in their all of that energy into uh, 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 seeing what you, your will for their lives and what you want for them, and letting you decide if it, if if it was good enough or not good enough? If they turn that that energy over from someone else to you. Wow, what a greater world, what a bigger world. What, I mean, what this would be, how we would have more people turning their lives to God. Okay, I'm giving him a gift. Lord, this is a gift. So I hope that you're pleased with my gift. I hope that you're pleased with my sacrifices. What sacrifices are we making for God? 
I really want to know what sacrifices are you making for God? You, it's like you're making everybody else happy. But when it comes to God, we give him the short end of the stick. Now, I'm not talking to you if the shoe doesn't fit. Don't you put don't you put your feet in them. I'm talking to those who make sure everybody else is good, and then you neglect God. You make sure your family good. You make sure your outside of the family good. You make sure your church family members are good. But you neglect to see if God is good. God, are you pleased with my life? Lord, are you pleased with the way I handle this business? Are you pleased with the way I handle your business? Are you pleased with me? Amen. We ain't talking about nobody else, but are you pleased with me? Show me me. Lord God, if you're not pleased, show me me. Are we that transparent with God when we can just ask him? Father, just, uh, you know, I, I know I messed up. I know I make mistakes, but show me my ways, right? Are we we're always that transparent or do, are we afraid of what he may say? So turn, I want tonight, I just want to share with you, I think that we should turn and give God more attention than what we do. I think we should make greater sacrifices than what we have been making. And when you make the sacrifices doing what God wants you to do, there shall be a great reward. Can I say that again? When you make sacrifices for what God wants you to do, there shall be a great reward. Listen, God can bless you better than anybody else can. I'm telling you, when God blesses us, sometimes we can't even open up our mouth to talk about it because we are in awe of what he's doing. I'm telling you, God will drop the biggest blessing. He can drop the biggest blessing on you. And you know you weren't right. You know you hadn't been, done, haven't been doing right by God. You know you haven't been doing right by God's people, but he wanted to bless you anyway, just to let you know, I saw you, I see you, but that's okay. I still love you. And here it is. I'm going to give you this. It's not that he's giving you a peace offering. You don't have to do that because he's God. But it's that, that he just want to let you know he loves you still in spite of you. Come on here. He still loves you in spite of you. And then when you I say in spite of, in spite of your angry, uh, anger issues, in spite of your uh, mishandling money, mis- mishandling his people, in spite of your nasty ways, your low-down tone, I mean, just all kinds of things. He still loves us in spite of us tonight. So we just bless him. We love him. And I'm not going to talk about the president tonight. Amen. So y'all don't have to worry. <laughs> y'all just get ready. <clears throat> Amen. Just get ready um, for things to change. Uh, we're in a new year. You know, and a lot of people are looking for things to get better. We are all praying for things to get better. My prayer is that God's will be done. It's going to be done anyway, right? His will will be done. So I'm praying that his will be done and that he will show mercy towards those who need mercy in their time of need. He will show mercy towards us as we are obeying him. Amen. Because what is here in the land, we're going to need God for real. Ain't nobody got to play with you. Ain't nobody got to pump and prime you. It's up to you what you do. But, you know, I'm choosing not to be around a people that does not want God. I choose not to be around a people. I'm talking about those who are adamant about not not serving God because I'm seeing things happen to them. And, you know, I'm not trying to put it out there, but I'm just seeing things happen. For those of you, be very careful. Blasphemy is real. You do not blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Okay? God won't forgive you for that. Stop blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. I'm seeing people dying. Ah, shota by Shia for blaspheming against the name of the Lord. So we got to be careful. We got to be so careful. But I want to see us all succeed in, in this thing, in this walk with God. I want to see us succeed. I want to see us on the right path. I, I mean, you know, I'm too many of too many people are dying. And I'm talking about not dying. I'm not talking about COVID now. I'm talking about dying at the hand of somebody, someone who's behind a gun. First of all, they don't, they're not supposed to have the gun. Second of all, they really can't shoot the gun. Third of all, uh, uh, somebody who's really not mentally stable. And, and, and so, I'm tired of seeing death uh, also come by the hands of teenagers, right? I'm tired of seeing death uh, of coming by those who don't want to work. And so they're trying to take from those who are working hard 
workers, people who have who earn their money, their keep, and they're trying to uh, to provide for their families. And then you have somebody who don't care about life at all, who comes and try to take your life because you're working hard, or try to steal from you. Why go in somebody's house that 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 you've known all your life? And I'm talking to the African American community right now. Why go in somebody's house that you've known all your life that have fed you, that have clothed you, that have helped you, and then now you want to go steal from them because it's Christmas? Do you not know you may not even make it out alive? Right? Because even though that individual may have known you all your life, if they feel threatened, they may uh back it may backfire on you because you thinking you're going there to hurt them to steal from them. They may have some you never know now. They may in return put some fire on you. Right? But why would you do that? Why do we have to steal from our own? Why do we steal from people who love and care for us? Why can't we just ask? Oh, okay, I forgot. We can't ask because we don't want to work. See, people don't mind helping you when you when you have a desire to do right. You can get somebody. You may not have enough money to get some gas to go to work, but you can get somebody that will say, listen, I'm going to front you this money. Uh, uh, pay it forward. Do it to somebody who may need it. Uh, and so they will. they don't mind helping you when you're out there doing right or trying to do right. The old people used to say, as long as they're trying to do right, I don't mind helping them. But see, they're not going to let you uh, mess with their money, and, and you out there smoking and getting high, getting drunk, beating up women, whatever you out there doing, they're not going to do that. They're not going to help you uh, uh, stay a menace to society. Can I say it like that? But as long as you're working, we don't mind helping you get to where you need to be. Because, li- listen, I was once young. But I thank God I didn't need the help of people, but I had the help of my mother, my you know, my family. And I was fortunate enough to be able to have a brand new car when I turned 16, when I graduated high school at 17, because that car some had another malfunction. And then I got another brand new car at 17. So, and before then, I was uh, didn't know how to drive a stick. My brother said, "Get up, go get in my truck." He showed me how to drive a stick with that was in the. I guess you call it, I don't know. It wasn't in the floor, but it was up at the top by the steering wheel. And he just told me, he said, well, you this, do this, do that, and you just show me like that, right? So I'm like, one, two, three, four steps. And I, don't, I didn't know what I was doing, but I drove his truck all the way to the store up the street on, on in first in um in first gear. <laughs> and I was like maybe 14-ish, right? And so, and then when I turned like – um. 15, he let me, because he was he worked out of town, he let me keep his Corvette, so I would drive his Corvette to school, right? And then so, but when it got to be, you know, but I was a good driver, but when it was time for me to get my permit, I got my permit, my license, you know, just like what we're supposed to do. See, what people are failing to realize is there is a law, there's laws of the land, and we must abide by the laws of the land as citizens, right? And I'm going to get off of this. But, um, you know, some people don't feel, they feel like they don't have to abide by any law. So they feel like they can just drive all the, uh, for 30 years with no license. And when they get caught, they have no license, no insurance. You know, just a whole bunch of stuff. But we got to be, we got to turn this thing around. We're going to have to live right. We got to live, do it right. If you start off right, you'll end right, okay? And I'm going to end that. Let's go to the book, Romans. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Word of God and see how far we can get. We're going to go to Romans, the 12th chapter. I'm waiting on y'all to get there, but I'm going to go ahead and start. Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 1, and it reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, you got to say it one more time, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. Mm. People of God, God is saying tonight, and be not conformed to this wicked world. You're paying more attention to the what's going on in the world than you are doing with what God is telling you to do. You're focusing on, oh, they up the street, they doing this, they doing, they got a part of the night, they got a part. You're focusing too much on the world mm, and the evilness, the evilness in the world, too, but you're not doing anything to help it. You're not an advocate. You're not speaking out. You're not calling a prayer line. You're not calling a prayer a vigil to, to, to speak out against the, the violence or whatever is going on, you're just talking about it. It's time out for us just talking.
talking about stuff and be, listen, we, let us be the change that our communities need. Let us be the change that our churches need. Let us be the change that our families need, right? Glory to God. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So listen. Hallelujah. So uh, so so here's what I want you to do. Glory to God. God is helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life and place it before God. Y'all give everybody else to God. Uh, you know, baby and him. I, I used to go with him. And, and, and I still love him, but, you know, he died. He died so I won't die. You bring him. Lord, have mercy. Why didn't you bring baby to the prayer line uh-huh, while he was up and doing what he was doing? He could have got delivered if somebody would have showed him the way. Sometimes people don't have anybody to show them the way. Let us be the ones that lead people to Christ. Listen, the Bible says he who wins souls is wise. Some of you two are afraid to go to your street corner. My God, but you say you call to the nations. Where are you going? You first got to leave off your street in order to be called somewhere. You won't even go out of your state. So how you call to the nations? Help us tonight, God. When you do all of these things, place it before God as an offer. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. We all, we, we're so uh, wanting to please other people, but we're not embracing what we need to do for God. We're not thinking about what we need to do for him. He's calling you, calling you, calling you. And, and you, you get leaders that keep saying, girl, you know you got a call of God on your life. Sir, you know there's a call of God on your life. The hand of God is on your life. And y'all just, mm-hmm, yeah, I know. They keep telling me. And I'm, you steady running. When are you going to stop running? Do you not know that you can't outrun him? You can't outrun him. I don't care how fast you get there. You still won't outrun God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit in, fit into it without even thinking it, without thinking. Don't become so uh, uh, well adjusted to your culture. We're African American culture. Don't be, I don't care what culture you are. You can be uh, Hispanic, whatever you are. Don't you get so comfortable? Don't get so adjusted, meaning that you're getting comfortable. You guys go flow, go with the flow. No, the devil is a liar. That you don't don't get so comfortable. Hallelujah! Trying to fit in. Glory to God. Without thinking this thing through, there's a lot of things we need to think through. Do I want to be a product of the environment? Or do I want to be one that gets out of the environment? You are the environment, but you can change your environment. If you don't like something about the way things are going, you'll be the change. You'll be the light. You'll be the go- the forerunner. You'll be the, uh, I'm, I'm serious, you'll be the forerunner. you go going out there and be the general. Come on here. Stop sitting down and doing nothing because you're just sitting down and talking. talking to this, you're talking to people that don't have a voice. You're talking to people that does not have influence. It's time for you to start speaking to people and connecting with like-mindedness so that you can make some changes. If people that are, uh, oh, that's uh, who you talking to, Ma? Ma, and that's talking to old Sue Betty. Sue Betty just sitting on the porch just watching everything. They ain't doing nothing but gossiping. It's time to stop gossiping and be about your father's business. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. We got to see what God is saying to, for us to do. We got to know what he's telling us to do. So you can be, listen, and even if it doesn't come from you and, and and you have your leader and they speak into your life, be quick about handling it. Be quick about changing. Be quick about doing the thing that is right. Amen? Unlike the cultures around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you. He's, oh, Lord, have mercy. He brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. That's what God does. 
And that's being and being not conformed to this old wicked world. But that's called being transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to change your mind. Everything begins in the mind. And if you don't change the way you think about a thing, if you don't change your perception, and if you don't change your optics, sometimes you're going to stay the same way you've been all the time. You got to see yourself being better. You got to see yourself doing better. You got to see yourself getting up from now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Changing things around you. If it don't fit, don't force it. Just relax and let it go. And sometimes you think they ain't going to fit. Stop trying to force something that God never ordained for your life. Stop trying to be around the people God never ordained for you to be around. God has already given you a seat at the table. Sit at the table and stop trying to be something that you're not. See, y'all don't even know when to have church. Even the, listen, even the technicians don't know when to clap. My God. Hallelujah. Read it on. Verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is amongst you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, but to think soberly according as God uh, have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Listen, everybody has a measure of faith. So when you say, well, um, I ain't got, but you know, when you talk about the mustard seed faith, the seed is very small. It's very, very small. You can, sometimes you may have to look at the seed with a microscope. He said, that, I mean, that's all you need. And if that can move mountains, what's wrong with some of our faith, who, those, of us, those of us who got ridiculous kind of faith? If a little bit of seed can move mountains, something got to be wrong with us because we got, some of us say we got crazy faith and, and we ain't moving nothing. Uh-oh. We got crazy faith and ain't moved the, we ain't moved the chair. <laughs> our faith ain't open the door. So what is it? Hallelujah. You got to be sober-minded. I mean, you can't be drunk. You can't be high. You got to be soberly-minded. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me, and especially as I have responsibilities in relations to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace, it is important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does, not by what we are and what we are and what we do for him. Hallelujah. For verse four, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Okay. Now we're talking when it says for we have many members in one body. We are many members, many members. Every member in your body needs to, they need each other to survive. But all members have not the same office. So in the fivefold, there are five offices, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the past, I mean, the pastors, the, the, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers, right? And the five offices, we all have members. But uh, we all may not have the same office. We all can't be the same thing is what it's saying, right? But there are many members in the body, right? But we are supposed to work together. Hallelujah. Amen. So we being many are one body in Christ, all right? I just said that. We being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts. Differing according to the grace. Having then gifts different. We got different gifts. Some of you may have the word of knowledge. Some of you may have the laying on of hands. Some of you may have a uh, prophecy, a the gift of prophecy. Some of you may have interpretation of tongues. Some of you may have diverse of tongues, diversities of tongues. Some of you may have, um, I said, the gift of healing. Amen. The word of wisdom, word of knowledge, right? Those are different gifts. We don't teach on that much, but you need to. Uh, given to you, to us. Whether well, prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Let me tell you something. You prophesy by faith. When we prophesy, we prophesy by faith. All right? Hallelujah. We got many differing gifts. Right? So listen, that's because you prophet, you have the gift of prophecy. That's a gift. Does not mean that you have the office of the prophet. If anybody can be prophetic, you can have a prophetic gift. 
but that does not mean you are a prophet. We gotta we gotta reiterate that because a lot of people believe because they tell you a, they give you a prophecy. Oh yeah, prophet gave me. No, baby, that ain't no prophet. They just gave you a prophetic word because they have the gift of prophecy. The apostles can prophesy. The prophets most definitely can prophesy. The evangelists can prophesy. Pastors and teachers. But all don't have that gift. I know many pastors that don't have the gift of prophesy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So listen, in this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the uh, other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellent forms, I mean forms and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't, we weren't. This is what I'm saying. We um we all have been called, God have called us all, right? But we don't have to be envious of another man's gift because you gotta work you gotta really work and and and, uh, and um you gotta work on your own gifts, right? You gotta keep growing in your gifts. Amen. It's not uh we start at one point, but you should grow. Every day you should be growing in what God called you to be, every gift that He's given you. You should be studying your gift. Just like you study your craft for work and careers, you need to study your gifts uh, uh, that God gives you. Amen. And put them in operation. Because if you don't use them, you'll lose them. Glory to God. Uh, all right. So our ministry, let us wait on uh, on uh, on our ministry. Or he that teacheth, teacheth on teaching. Or he that exalted on exhortation. He that giveth let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, right? So if you preach, just preach God's message. My God, nothing else. Do what he called you to do and don't do worry about nothing else in nobody else's office. Stop comparing yourself to other people. You will never see yourself as good as them well, unless you um, unless you got this other kind of spirit. <laughs> Unless you are, uh, you know, arrogant. And arrogancy will cause you to think yourself better than God. You'll be just like Lucifer. Amen. But um, don't compare yourself. Don't look at nobody else's ministry to sum your ministry up beside that because you don't know what they went through. And you may be doing just, you may be just in the hand, that's where God wants you to be. And they are somewhere in left field, miserable, really don't know what they're supposed to be doing. So don't look at nobody else because they may have more members than you. Don't size your membership up like that. And don't you let nobody call your membership fall either. Glory to God. Because you should be, we are we are impactful. We, I don't care how many come through the doors. We shall be impactful in packing nations. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So listen, okay, so preach. Don't do nothing else. If I ask you to sing a song, just get up there and sing a song. Don't you get up there and sing and start prophesying. Ain't nobody asked you to do that. We got to learn to do what God told us to do, and that's it. If if you help, just help. Don't take over. That's what we got to take over, demons. We want to be more than what we are and can't even whoop up, can't cast out a fly. But you want to be the great this and the great that. Sit down somewhere and get yourself taught. Glory to God. If you teach, stick to teaching. If you give, encourage, and guidance, be careful that you don't get bossed. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give and, and uh, if you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Hallelujah. Got a few more minutes. All right. Let, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love. And honor, and honor preferring one another. Did y'all see that? Be kindly affectionate one another. 
to one another with brotherly love and honor. Honor your brother, your sister, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, slothful in business, fervent in prayer, I mean in spirit, <laughs> uh, serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Don't fake your love. Don't fake the funk, as, as uh, the, uh, I heard somebody say. Uh-uh. Love from the center of who you are. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Um, rejoicing, verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue an instant in prayer, distributing to the necessities of saints and giving to hospitality. Burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of the master. Cheerfully expect. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians be inventive in hospitality. Glory to God. Verse 14, I'm getting through. Bless them which persecute you. Bless, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. And weep with them that do weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. But condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Glory to God. Bless your enemy. No, oh God, no cursing others under your breath. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your, your, your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobody. Don't be the great somebody with your arrogant self. Conceit itself. Recompense no, to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. But if it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. It's, 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 oh, let's go back. It says, if it be possible. Did you hear that? If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil. Hallelujah, but good. So don't hit back. You ain't got to fight back. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you got it in you, get along with everybody. If it's in you not, because some of you ain't got nothing. But you say you're a child of the most high, and God calls you to do this and that, but you don't love nobody. Ain't nobody right in your eyesight. Everybody evil. Every saint that we think is a, that's a good man or a good woman of God. Oh no, something wrong with you. Find fault in everybody. Well, who do you? Well, do you love yourself? Because I'm I'm beginning to learn that when people find fault in everything somebody does, everybody there ain't nobody they speak well of. Then they hate themselves. Something is wrong on the inside. Hallelujah. So we got to deal with that before you can deal with anything else, right? Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. God says, I'll do the judging. He said, and I'll take care of it. And I'm telling you, I've seen God take care of people time after time after time. He'll take care of it if we give it to him. Glory to God. Our scriptures tells us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person some lunch. Or if you see him thirsty, give him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. So don't let evil get the best of you, get the best of evil by doing good. So tonight, God has given us, these are our Christian behaviors or Christ-like behavior that, you know, that is expected of us. As Apostle Paul was saying, these are, as he was writing to the Romans, these are behaviors that we're supposed to think that, you know, this should be our behavior every day, consistently. Amen. Consistently, uh, uh, you know, giving our bodies, presenting our bodies, a living sacrifice, being holy, right? 
uh, or not, you know, allowing the world to over to rule us in our minds. That when God is our head, when you have given your life to God, the God is your head. Allow God will still allow. You know, He does abide with the laws of the land, but He already knows that that, that that this world is corrupt, and we're and they our government operates from the Babylonian system. So therefore, uh, uh, when God have already removed us out of Egypt, why would we have to go back to Egypt? You don't have to be under the, the the Pharaoh's thumb anymore. We have, he's been free. He has freed us from that. But what we have, we do have to do is pray for those, the Bible says, pray for those who rule over you. And the president, they rule over the cities, right? The, the country, the cities, the countries or whatever. And they have the rulership, but God got more rulership than them because he is God. And he's the one that allowed them to get there. Although there are times when presidents are in office and we don't vote for them and they're not our choice. But that's okay. God, remember, even if it's not God's choice, he, if he allowed it to happen, he's going to fix it, okay? If he allowed it to happen, he's going to make sure that we are taken care of. People of God, if you are a child of the Most High, if you are doing what God called you to do, I want to uh, give you a hand clap and let you know that I want to encourage you to keep going on. There's more greater is coming for you, but you got to keep pressing in. I know you get tired sometimes. I be that way as well, but we got to keep pressing in because in our press, that's where we're going to see a lot of things. In our pressing, in our pressing, there is a blessing. In your pressing in, hallelujah, trying to get closer to God, that God begin to download things for you. He begin to download information that will help you to live better on this earth. We This is not our home, so we didn't come here to stay, but while we're here, we can Enjoy some heaven right here on earth, right? Glory to God. So we just give God a praise tonight for his word. These are behaviors that us practice these behaviors. Amen. Being affectionate one to another. Amen. If some your enemy is hungry, feed them. I tell them on the prayer line in the morning, I said, this week, uh, certain days I pick out, I say, listen, I want y'all to go bless your enemy. You ain't got to say a word. Uh, if they had their job and you're not working, go by there and, and um, surprise them with a lunch or give, leave the lunch up front with their name on it or whatever. So a gift card or something, you know what I mean? Just do something out of the blue. And they're going to be, they're going to be, it's going to make them miserable because they've been picking on you. They've been lying on you. They're keeping their name, your name in your mouth and you love them for real. But they just find all kinds of ways to come at you. I bless them. Buy them lunch. Give them a gas car. Give them some gas. All you doing is, the Bible says, all you doing is putting uh, 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 heaps of coals or fire on their head. Yeah. So we got to do these things. Amen. We got to do what the word says. We can't do it our way, people of God. We can't avenge ourselves. We cannot recompense evil for evil. We can't do that because we are children of God. So we got to be the light. We are the light of the world, so we got to do the things that light does. And light does not, uh, uh, you know, we just don't do these things. So y'all go back and read it for yourselves. Uh, ask God to give you more revelation. Amen. We just wanted to touch on it a little bit tonight. So I've closed the paperback book. I hope that you guys got a word out of it, of it tonight about our behavior that we need to have towards one another, towards God. Amen. Glory to God. So at this time, Dr. Kim and Kim, you can go ahead and open up the phone lines. I want you guys to come on. Uh, give us your name, what city and state that you're uh, chiming in from. Amen. And if you have a prayer request, uh, just let us know. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you all. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Apostle. Good evening, Apostle Hunter. Thank you for that word. <laughs> traveling home from J-Town. I just received that word, and I just thank you. Even on the job, you got to bless the enemy. Bless the ones that just don't want you. So I just thank you for that word tonight. Yes, blessings Lord. upon yes, blessings Lord. to you. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, I, I just thank you. Thank you. God and bless you. KB. Good evening. <laughs> hey, Minister KD. What's going on? What's shaking? <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. We're shaking. Amen. Hey, man, God is up to something big, woman of God. I need for you 
to to the to listen to January one. I need you to get get so an expectation to it scares you that how you know what I mean because it's a feeling that's coming over God's people because they know God is about to bless them, but they don't know when. But they are in expectation, and God wants us to raise up our level of expectation. He wants us to be super charged, yeah. super excited. And Minister Jones said this morning, he said, "Oh, he said Mom, I feel a surge." A surge, a surge on this lot, a surge. And and I told him, he said it's like a surge of excitement. And it is because we're excited about what God is getting ready to do. We may not know. We may not know. But we are excited because God's getting ready to bless his people. You hear me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. So God says to let you know that, you know, you can go ahead and start looking, begin to look for those things that he's already spoken about. Amen. Go ahead, start looking. Go ahead and start looking. See, you know why we don't have us some things? We, 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 be, we say we've been waiting on God, but God be waiting on us. Yeah. Go ahead and look. Yeah. See, what you're going to do is make the devil mad because you're going to have just enough faith to go out there and say, this is it. This belongs to me. God want us to go get yeah. our stuff. He yeah. want us to go get our stuff. Seems that. Yes, you can't be afraid to go get what belongs to you, baby. You got to go get it. Amen. As Mary Mary say, go get your blessings. Go get it. Go get it. Go, go get, get it. Go blessing. get it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's your time. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. It's your time, yeah. woman. God. And I'm going to leave that alone. Thank you. Thank I praise you. God for you tonight. Thank you. I thank you for tuning in. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And, and listen, Amen. you be, uh, you know, you uh, you stay on the winning side. Amen. Love you tonight. Yes, ma'am. Love you more. Thank you. All right. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good evening, Carla. You're on the air. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Apostle Sylvia Hunter. How are you this afternoon? This is Minister Rakita calling from Mount Vernon, Alabama. How are you tonight? Woo-hoo. I am well. What's shaking, Minister Rakita? Oh, it's all is well. It's all is well. I enjoyed that word on tonight. Amen. All is Amen. well. I'm telling you, it is well. It is well, and it is so. And and because it is well, and it is so, that means it is well, and it is so. God said what he promised, and it is, it is well. What he told you he was going to do, it is well. It is well. It is Lord. well. It is well. Yes. For real, it is. Yes. For real, it is. Listen, it is well. And God said, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. And I know you've been saying, well, Lord, I, I just lay, I just, you said, Lord, I'm not rushing you. Ah, but I, you know, Lord, you know, you can speed it up, you know, but I ain't rushing you, God. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> but, uh, hey, it's coming right on time. You hear me? This is yes, going to be a right yes, on time miracle. It's going to be a right on time. And the reason why it's going to be a miracle, because you ain't going to expect God to do it like this. See, this is that's why God likes to blow our minds, because we put them in a box. Sometimes I'm not saying that you put them in a box, but I'm talking about we sometimes put them in a box. And so we say, okay, God, I know you're going to do it. And and we think we, when, and then so God says, okay, you expect me to bless you like this. But God said, oh, baby, I'm, I'm about to do this thing. It's going to be big. What he getting ready to do for you is going to be B-I-G. With an exclamation point behind it. It's going to be big. God's about to blow your mind. Yes, Lord. Hey, Shonda the Messiah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, God, thank you for being on and joining me from Mount Vernon, Alabama. I appreciate God for you tonight. Amen. You stay encouraged. Stay on the winning yes. side. Yes, ma'am. Love Amen. you tonight. Love you more. God bless you. Hey, good evening, Carla. You're on the air. Now, I know somebody is on the line. Come on now. Good evening, Apostle. God bless you. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Honey, if I was doing any better, I couldn't stand myself. Hey, mm-hmm. man, where you chiming in from, ma'am? Mobile, Alabama. Whoa, come on here. Come on through, Mobile. Glory to God. Amen. Hey, woman of God, I need you to pick your level of excitement up. 
No level of expectation. I need you to bring it up to the tenth power. Come on here. Bring that thing on up here. Don't be talking and dragging all over. We got too much fire on this line. We got too much fire on this line. Listen. Shundable fire. Woo. This is your year. 2022 mm-hmm. is your year. We're in it right now. God say finish the assignment. Amen. I don't care what you got to do. If you got to lead, cut people, finish the assignment. Don't you dare. Now the Bosiah. You ain't going into 2023 without the assignment being completed. I don't care if you got to go day, night, evening, morning, noon, night. I don't care. Finish the assignment. Because the enemy mm-hmm. is trying to hold back God's people from the promises of God. But God's promises are yea and amen, and I won't take it back. Amen, I mean, amen. God bless you for tuning mm-hmm. in tonight. You be encouraged, woman of God. God bless Love you. you. God bless Love you. you. I felt. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Mandabase. Glory to God. Call you on the air. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. How are you doing this afternoon? This is Minister Emma from Brookhaven, Mississippi. Enjoy the word tonight. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anything? Uh, what's going on? What's shaking, Minister Emma? <laughs> that that money shaking in all our towns. <laughs> Say it again. I'm sorry. That money is shaking in all our towns. The money. All right, now. See, see, they, they ain't hear yeah. that. She said that money shaking in all of our accounts. I accept yeah. and I receive that yeah. money shaking in my account. Y'all yeah. better go home. Y'all better make that so Listen, yeah. declaration in the morning and your affirmation. Money is shaking yeah. in my account. Come on, Jesus. Yeah. Let it shake. Yeah. Hey, and yeah. I ain't going to be standing. Lord, I'm going to share, yeah. share, share. Yeah. I'm a tag and share. Come on, somebody. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ah, the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength, woman of God. Listen, when you can't do things yeah, like man. things are going on and you don't have a, 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 an outlet or whatever, just pull on the joy of the Lord. God say, pull on it. Because yes. it's there Hallelujah. for you. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I declare and decree tonight that the joy of the Lord it is your strength. Yes. You be in yes. peace yes. tonight. Yes. You sleep yes. well yes. tonight. Yes. You anoint your house yes. tonight. No that God is fighting for you, knowing that God is on your side. No weapons formed Amen. against you prosperous, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment is already condemned. But this is your inheritance, and God's yes. righteousness is with him. Amen. 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 Yes, Amen. Lord, Thank Jesus. you for tuning in it's tonight. In Jesus name. Thank you for bringing us the word in Jesus' name. And you be blessed. Amen. I accept. Love you. Love you more. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Call you on the air. Good afternoon, Apostle. Good afternoon. God bless you. <laughs> oh, I I love that word on the night. That was really a blessing. I'm just happy and overjoyed. That was what I needed. Amen, amen, amen. Because you know what? We just got to learn and just put things in a proper place. And when we do it, we're going to see the fruit of our labor. We're going to see what God has had in store for us all the time. A lot of times we just so focus on everything and everybody else till we lose focus, Minister Ashley, on ourselves. You didn't say your name, but I know who you are. You <laughs> from uh Bayonet, Alabama. Come on, by way of Monroe. From Monroe, by way of Bayonet, by way of Mobile. Come on, in Jesus' name. But um, so you know, God just wants us to focus, you know, on what He wants for us. It's not that He don't want us to have the best, eat the best, drive the best, wear the best, smell the best, because we are His children. So we are supposed to have all of those attributes. But you know, sometimes we just always trying to fit in. You don't have to fit in no longer, Minister Ashley. You done paid your dues. You done paid your dues. You don't have to fit in with them people. Hallelujah, because you're not of that kind. You know why you keep getting going bumping heads? Because you don't belong in that. You Listen, and you're not a part of that species. You don't belong to that kind. You're not of that family. So God, I brought you out of that. So that's why you're going to always bump heads with somebody that don't look like you, that are not in your, okay, you feel me. 
Glory to God. That's all I can say. I can't say that much more. But the Lord loves you, and he wants me to uh, really uh, uh, deal with that, the, his love for you. God said, I love you so much, and, and don't you ever, I don't care what state you find yourself in, know that God loves you and pull on his love. Let him saturate you again with his love because he loves you, and he got something for you to do. Otherwise, you, you you know, listen, he'll let you get so far, and then he'll snap you back on in because he loves you just that much. So I'm excited about your future, and I got to go. But I love you, woman of God. I'll talk to you in the morning, the Lord's willing. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. Listen, everybody, I need y'all to meet me next Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. You better have your mama. You better have your auntie. You better have your drunk cousin on here. You better have your crack-smoking sister on here. I don't care who it is. You get them here so that God can speak a word into their lives. I'm telling you, Dr. Kenny Kim has been real, and until next time, shalom. Christ, Christ the Savior.